Thank you, Chairman Archambault, for uh, a meeting with us to talk about you know recent events about this ongoing conflict, um, you know, struggle against this uh, this pipeline, the Dakota Access Pipeline. Now, last night uh, was a chaotic night just up the highway, the tear gas and the floodlights, water cannons, people like over a hundred people apparently injured. Um, you know, worries about hypothermia. The authorities really unleashed um, a hammering on, you know, the, the, the water protectors, as they call themselves, from the camp, uh, the barricade. What are your thoughts on what happened last evening? Well, I, you know, I think it's coming from the uh, oil company, the pipeline company, who has influenced the, the state government and who uh, is given orders to law enforcement to uh, do what they can and law enforcement is taking it to another level. Uh, every time something like this happens, it's interesting to see the escalation of force that is being used uh, last night with, with uh, water, using water in freezing temperatures, uh, put uh, people at a, a serious risk of hypothermia, um, using rubber bullets and targeting uh, the heads of people. So we've seen injuries, wounds of individuals who were shot in the face and the neck um, they're not shooting the body, they're shooting people's, uh, and, and they're targeting the head and that becomes lethal. These projectiles, anytime you, you fire a projectile at anybody, um, especially if you're targeting the head, um, that, that can be lethal. And so this is uh, starting to see uh, the force being escalated uh, with, with um, heightened aggression. Um, the tear gas, they use cannons to uh, fire off these tear gas uh, bombs. And uh, where are they firing these things? Are they firing them into the crowds? Are they firing them off the side? And uh, normally, you, you fire these things, they explode, and they emit a crowd, uh, a cloud. But um, reports come back that they're firing into crowds. And uh, when those explode, those, those can cause serious harm um, to people. So. It's just interesting to see how this is escalating and how uh, much force and aggression the law enforcement is using and, and at whose command. And, and the water cannons, it was, you know, in, in Canada we use Celsius, it was around minus three degrees um, last night and they were shooting people with the water. You literally saw water freezing on a concertina wire on the razors, the icicles were forming. What do you make of that, the use of water? It's, it's uh, they're trying to hurt somebody. You know, it's cold. They know the temperatures are cold. This is the first time we've seen the use of water. This isn't something that they've used in the past. This uh, it started with uh, untrained handlers from the company handling guard dogs, uh, attacking protesters. Uh, they have uh, rubber bullets and mace that they were using uh, with batons. And now it's escalating to uh, tear gas cannons and uh, grenade cannon launchers, uh, rubber bullets. Um, projectiles, um, so it's just getting escalated. The, the, it's getting um, more and more serious, more and more dangerous. Um, not by the protectors. The protectors never did arm themselves with anything. Um, but you see, law enforcement and the Coda Access Pipeline, the company, escalating the use of force with the use of weapons, and and being that it's cold, uh, below freezing, it's um, dangerous for people to get exposed to water. Uh, so th the intention is there, it's clear, uh, by law enforcement and by the company. So it's, it's to bring harm. How does that make you feel when you see that? I guess it's just uh, disturbing, you know, to, to know that uh, one human being is willing to hurt another. And uh, nobody should be intentionally doing anything like that, especially if somebody else is unarmed. Part of the issue here is that they're restricting your community's ability to use that highway. Um, and, you know, they're, they're, they're using excuses as to why they keep it shut. What's your understanding of why it continues to be shut and what efforts are you willing to make to allow, like, the Department of Transport, what have you, to inspect what, what's happening right now? So the, the Department of Transportation says the bridge was compromised because of a fire that was set on it. Uh, so the, the protesters or water protectors um, set fire to items on the bridge. 
um, that causes the asphalt to melt and it's a concrete bridge so they have to bore test to make sure the, comp the concrete wasn't uh, compromised. Uh, the Department of Transportation doesn't want um, anyone on the bridge if it's, it, it could be faulty because of the, the, the fire damage. So this is their take on it. Um, the Department of Transportation doesn't want to come in and do bore testing uh, while there's um, water protectors or protesters in that area. Uh, so law enforcement can move just to the other side of the bridge so that the um, um, Department of Transportation inspe bridge inspector can go and, and analyze uh, if there was any damage. And I, I, I don't think there was uh, any damage. I, I would say the asphalt melted, but I don't think the heat was um, hot enough to compromise the, the concrete. Uh, so <coughs> what it is is it's a, a roadblock to keep people from going up the road further to uh, the actual construction site. It is a public highway, and uh, it is the main route for uh, the people who live in, on Standing Rock, um, our membership, and it's uh, the route that gets us to um, uh, Bismarck, the uh, community of Bismarck, where the majority of uh, our commerce takes place. So uh, well not only that, but if there was an emergency or an accident, uh, now we're, we're forced to go an alternative route that takes about 20 minutes further. So all of this is causing hardship on the community, uh, causing stress on everybody. Uh, because we know when everything is all said and done, regardless of what happens with the pipeline, uh, we're still going to be here. So if you just take a look at uh, the things that are happening at the camp, look down and uh, see the different structures going up uh, and the waste. Um, when this is all over, who's going to have to clean that up? The people who live here will have to clean that up. Uh, the, the bridge, uh, we can't get hot mix in uh, now because hot, hot mix for to resurface the asphalt is out of season. So uh, that when everybody's, when it's all said and done, everybody's going to be gone, but that bridge is still going to be uh, compromised and we're going to have to before we can use that road, access that road again, it's going to take some time or, or we're going to have to come up with some alternative way so that we can uh, make that crossing, uh, whether it's with gravel or, or whatever. So uh, there's also the, the, not only is it the waste and the um, uh, refurbishing uh, or putting that, that land back in its original state, that we're going to have to clean up. Um, we're also going to have to rebuild relationships that are, are broke. So people who come in masses, they're here to do one thing. Um, they say it's to protect the water, but that they're, they're, they're trying uh, to create a war. And when you create a war, you damage relationships. So when this, is all, this war is done, the relationships have to be reestablished rebuilt, and who has to do that? The people who live here. We're going to be stuck with cleaning up the mess, and we're going to be stuck with re rebuilding relationships. Uh, and it may take decades before everything is back to normal. It may take another 100 years. We don't know. Uh, but I, know, I do know that um, when we first started this, we said we need to be mindful of who we are, and we need to be listen to our elders, we need to listen to our youth, and we need to listen to the spirits. And all three of them said, you need to be respectful, not to use violence. Um, once there's violence used, natural law is going to take over and that pipeline is going to go through, and there's going to be damages. Uh, the repercussion is going to be there. So who has to deal with that? So when from the beginning we said, be, be prayerful, be peaceful, but now you have thousands of people coming with their own agendas, uh, their own concerns, uh, and, and they say they're protecting water. It's not about water anymore. It's about um, revenge, and it shouldn't be. You know, 
We have uh, so much good, and it's um, it's disheartening to know that uh, a lot of things that we try to build are being destroyed. I want I want to continue down this theme about the impact this is having on your community, and whether your community is being forgotten by the people. I, get, I, I would say our, I, I would <coughs> say that we're just getting ignored because uh, and it, you know we welcome everybody and we're thankful everybody came um, but we live here and our message has been be prayerful and be peaceful we don't need to strategize for a war um, but people say I feel like my hands are tied and they stand in a prayerful stance like their hands are being tied right here to pray. Um, if, if we did this in a positive way, it would get way more attention than the neg negative way. Uh, so <coughs> if your hands feel like they're being tied, then maybe you shouldn't be here. Uh, if, if you went someplace, if I went any place, I would have respect to the place where I'm going. I would have respect to the people that are living there. If I went to your house, and if your house said, please take your shoes off when you come in, I would respect that. And it's not a whole bunch. It's not a, it's not a big demand or a big ask, but it's just being respectful and mindful. Because I represent my family, I represent my community, and I'm going to do my best to, to show that. Um, and so that you understand but because we have so many people with so many agendas that they want to do their own thing and they think that they're doing the right thing um, by fighting. And nobody remembers who they are as guests. But everybody will remember Standing Rock and what happened. So we live with the ramifications. We live with the repercussions of everything. If it's good, we'll live with that. If it's bad, we're going to have to live with that. We're going to have to deal with that. And that's the impact that this, this whole movement is starting to have, um, where it's no longer prayerful and peaceful. It's um, all about taking action, when the only action that we ask is that you show support and you be mindful of who you are and where you come from. Are you, are you going to try to do anything about this? Are you gonna, is there something going to come at the camp? Well, when, no. you know, I tried to, <coughs> early on, I tried to get people to understand where we're at. And the, the problem is that uh, they think that I'm trying to colonize. They think that I'm trying to be a dictator. They think that I'm trying to um, control. And this camp has taken a life of its own. Um, we have 6,000 members that live on Standing Rock, tribal members that live on Standing Rock, 2.3 million acres. There's 6,000 people at the camp. And they're not under any government. They're on their own. Um, so when, when I try to say, this is where we are, this is how we are, we're thankful that you came to stand with us, um, they'll say, if I try to say, you know, we, we really need to respect um, what we're doing, be mindful of what we're doing, we're not, col not going to get colonized by another government. So I'll, I'm viewed as uh, just another government. Which is okay, you know, and so I pull back and say, just know that you're going to be leaving something behind when you go and know who's going to clean it up. Is your, community, here. is your community suffering, are, are, are there, yeah, is your community suffering right now from what's going on that, that you know, the community's being more <coughs> here, but what, what are the impacts? To, you, you, even, you even said uh, that it's a major road that's blocked. That is a major road that block, is blocked. And that creates hardship on our, our elders who have to get to Bismarck for dialysis or who have to get to emergency services, have to get to Bismarck. The shortest route is that road. Um, our community members are now rerouted. So uh, everybody is being impacted. And it's not that we're not thankful and that we're not appreciative of everybody coming to support, but they just have to know that what they do is going to leave an impact on everybody here. Now there's, there's, an, there's another level to this, which is the legal, 
negotiated level right now that's going on with the, the U.S. Army Corps. We have, we, you know, we have various things happening. We have the ongoing lawsuits. Uh, Energy Transfer Partners is going after the Army Corps. Um, but the Army Corps at this moment is, is saying they're going to be engaging further with Standing Rock and with uh, Cheyenne River. Um, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that the next step in this is that the Army Corps wants to meet with with you and Cheyenne River to discuss two issues. If we do grant this easement, what conditions should we attach to it? And secondly, if what what are the reasons why we shouldn't grant this easement? Those are the my understanding. Those are the two main issues they want to discuss with you. Where is that at right now? So we we are still waiting to um, see if there's another meeting. We we did meet with them last week. Um, from the beginning, Standing Rock has been fighting this for two years. You know this isn't something new, and we've been. Uh, working uh, hard at all levels. Um, we, when we first heard about it, September 2014, we had uh, the Energy Transfer Partners, Dakota Access Pipeline, people come with the Public Service Commission, and they came here to this chambers. And at that time, we told them we didn't want this pipeline here to take it away from us. And uh, we identified our treaties, the treaty land that it's crossing. We, we let them know that we're concerned of our, our safe drinking water. We let them know we're scared. Of, uh, we're, we're concerned of the environment, environmental impacts that this will cause. And when something goes wrong, it's going to be us. We'll be the first uh, to be impacted by this. So from the beginning, we've been signed. So it wasn't until uh, the Corps of Engineers issued a environmental assessment with uh, FONSI, a finding of no significant impact that we filed suit. And so we filed the suit and we, we informed the courts that we weren't consulted on this matter and we needed to, we needed to um, be consulted. And we had other federal agencies, Department of Interior, the Environmental Protection Agency and the uh, Advisory Council on Historic Preservation write letters to the court saying you need to consult with Standing Rock Sioux Tribe um, the court ignored everything and said this is a uh, EA. Uh, so in our correspondences, the judge ruled that we had more than enough time to be consulted, uh, and and we didn't we didn't do it. So there's a consultation issue, <laughs> consultation, um, with government to government, and then um, advisory council historic preservation, um, national historic preservation act, uh, section 106 says you consult on uh, sacred sites. That consultation and this consultation are confused, so the court tries to blend them together, and when you blend them together, both of them get lost. So we didn't, that's how we feel. We don't feel like we were, were adequately consulted with uh, a meaningful consultation session. So the judge ruled that while you talk to the Corps of Engineers, every time we talk to the Corps, every time we talk to the Public Service Commission, every time we talk to the Dakota Access Pipeline, we said we didn't want this pipeline here. Uh, but because it wasn't in the formal process for the record, uh, no matter if we talked to them 389 times or not, because it wasn't in the formal process, formal check the box process, um, they said the judge will, will say that we did consult. So we appealed it. Uh, the Corps of Engineer, or the Department of Army, Interior, and Justice s released a statement saying, you guys, uh, we're going to hold off on issuing an easement. There's not going to be any boring underneath the Missouri River until we have uh, further discussion on consultation and until we review the process of what the Corps of Engineers did. They reviewed the process, and the Corps said, it's good. The Department of Army said they followed all the laws that are in place. So the problem is the laws that are in place are flawed. And uh, to change laws, pipeline laws, um, it's, it's, it may take some work, and it's something that we can work on in the future. But today, with this pipeline, the Department of Army said the Corps of Engineers followed the law to the T, and everything is good. But we're not going to issue an easement until we have further discussion with the tribe uh, because of the tribal lands that are in, in of concern, and uh, because there, if there's something that the tribe can demonstrate why uh, it's a high risk for us, then 
we'll take that in co into consideration. So that's where we're at today. We're just waiting to have this discussion, um, and we're trying to put together some information to the core. Um, it goes back to treaty lands. Um, it is within our treaty lands, uh, so that takes another, that would take a whole nother act or a whole nother lawsuit from what we're doing. We're just uh, making sure that the environmental protection laws, uh, Clean Water Act laws, um, uh, uh, s National Historic Preservation laws are all being followed. Uh, so that's our argument is that we, we don't feel that they are are safe and they're 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 being followed. So you, you expect another meeting with the the core before this is done? I'm <coughs> hoping so. But yeah. but it's not guaranteed. There's no meeting date set, so until ha we get that set up then we'll we'll have further discussion. Ha has there been any overtures like as of today from them? No. Okay. So but you also said you're gonna be bringing up a treaty argument. Um, <clears throat> so No, that's the tribes will have to okay. bring up the treaty argument. And if, if our tribe tried to bring up the treaty argument, um, one, our ancestors were not signers of the treaty, eighteen fifty one treaty. But we're clumped in there because uh, we're part of the Great Sioux Nation. Our sitting bull stood back and he said these treaties are not fair and they're not right and I'm not gonna sign. So, so uh, what they did was they just got uh, leaders from different um, Teoshpais or different families, different um, Oyates, different nations, and they said, these are our treaty signers. Um, so if we were to bring in a treaty argument, I need all the Great Sioux Nation people to be on the same page and saying, this is what we're going to do. Because whatever happens, if, we, if our treaties are not honored, and if I brought this argument forward, it impacts all the other Great Sioux Nation tribes. So it's not just up to me. So th if that argument has to take place, it can't be just by Standing Rock. It has to be by all Great Sioux Nation tribes and to take it forward. And where is that at? Is that in Washington? Well, they've been having treaty meetings, so um, it's really difficult to get all the treaty members, treaty signers, or uh, descendants of treaty signers, and um, there's different factions of the treaty um, delegations from different tribes, so they have to figure that out and, and take the the next step. Are you? Are, do you feel is is this nearing the end game? Is is Standing Rock at the mercy of whether the Army Corps desi decides to make agree to the easement or not? Is, will it be over once they s if they say yes? Is that done or like what what more can be done? Well, I think any time that pipe's not underneath the river, then we still have a chance and. and I, I I always felt that with prayer, uh, anything can happen. And so we continue to pray that this doesn't happen. Uh, the pipeline doesn't go underneath the river and threaten our, our water, threaten our future generations. Um, so we, I, I always just look at it as it's not there yet. Um, until it's there, uh, then I'll say that's that's what the, the possibilities are, but are there right still now, options if they green light it? Are there still is this still something you can do? We still pray. Now the the Army Corps is, is has a meeting on November thirtieth about sort of broader national level consultations on issues. Do you expect a decision on the easement before that meeting or after? Uh, are you talking about the nationwide permit yeah. twelve yeah. consultation with us? Yeah, yeah. they're they're going to be here November thirtieth. Yeah. 30th, yeah. Um, I don't know. What, I, I don't have any timelines for you. Um, so if you're asking me when is this easement going to be granted or denied, mm -hmm. I can't tell you. Have you have you had any recent uh, communications with the White House? Uh, not late, not recently. When's the last time that? Last week. And how, was it over in person or over the phone? All over the phone and in person. There's staff from the White House that came. And are you are you free are you free to tell us a little bit about what the discussions were? Well, it's just always the same with the concern for our water and and if there's anything that they can do to to stop the pipeline. Now I, I see the images sitting bull all around here when I drove in. I'm just wondering about that spirit. Is that is that something that this community draws on in this time of, of it is a bit of it is a crisis. I'm just can you talk a little bit about that? 
Yeah, or yeah. history? I just think that, you know, uh, Sitting Bull is known for famous quotes and, and uh, his foresight, you know, being able to look out into the future. And so uh, this Standing Rock Sioux tribe has always uh, looked at some of his real simple, basic statements that he made. And if you look at these simple statements, you can read into them. Uh, so his spirit is still around and it how it has always been around. So if he says, let's, look, let's put our minds together and see what we can build for our children, um, that's the spirit that carries us forward. Uh, he'll say, take the good, but leave the bad. Uh, so that's like those are those are some two two quotes that I just came off the top of my head where, you know, he's thinking forward. So some of the things that we have to do is we have to think forward, and uh, we, we can look at immediate uh, immediate future or long term for future. And what we're doing by protecting this water is long term. But if you look at the immediate future, uh, we know that we're going to have to repair a lot of damage. Our, for our kids, for uh, their kids, because this this has brought about a lot of uh, uh, conflict. Are there any conditions that would make the drilling the pipeline under the Lake Hawaii, um, a, like you, you would agree with drilling under the on the lake? Any conditions they could attach to that project? That Drill it somewhere else. So it's a, it's. A, Flat now. Yeah. Where do you, just to wrap this up, I'm just wondering, where do you see things going? Like, where, what does your gut tell you about that? I don't have, I don't, I don't have any, I, if I had a crystal ball, I'd tell you what the future is. And I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Are you able, is it hard to sleep at night? I'm just wondering about how you deal with, there's a lot on your shoulders. No, I just, you know, just pray every night and, and, uh, um, Hope for the best and plan for the worst. Thank you so much.